All right, good morning. Welcome back to Twin Stick Garage. For those that are new here, my name's Mark. I like to rebuild old trucks, old cars. This was my first project, a 1979 Peterbilt that I've named little by little. Because when I first dragged it home about, I don't know, five, six years ago, I had it parked out in the gravel there and I'd work on it through the winter. I'd work on it whenever I had time. It was way before I had this shop and additional projects. And it was kind of where the, the whole channel started. So I've been working on this truck. I've uh, redone the inside. I've done some mechanical work on it. I've put some chrome on it, made it look shiny, but it still needs paint. And a few episodes ago, I took all the chrome off. I took all the pipes off. There's still a few more things I need to take off of here before I can start working on the body work. But what I wanted to tackle today was instead of actually sanding all of the old layers of paint off. There's just, uh, there's probably two or three coats of paint on here before you get to bare metal. And what I did on my Project Snowman, my Smoking the Bandit replica truck, was I actually sanded that all down. So I thought I'd work a little smarter, not harder on the Peterbilt here. So I picked up some aircraft paint stripper. So my plan is, is I'll take off the remaining chrome and then I'll drive it out and I talked to the guy at the body shop and he said, you can go ahead and just uh, um, wipe it on there with a brush. And I thought, well, there's a lot of square footage here, so can I use a roller? And he goes, well, I suppose you can. So that's what I'm gonna try. I'm gonna use a roller, a paint roller, and roll on all of the, uh, the paint stripper and see if we can't get this down to bare metal. So with that, let's get at it. I got this in the mail and this was kind of a reminder to me that how long I've been working on this truck here. So it says from Alex to Mark aka Twin Stick Garage. My name is Alex and I'm 11 years old and I've been watching since I was six years old and he made this awesome picture. So thanks a lot Alex. I'm going to put that on my wall of fame. Oh, just tripping over my 400 Pontiac engine here. Uh, yeah, that's nice. So thanks so much, Alex. And if you want to send old Twin Six something, go ahead and look down in the description there. There's a, there's a PO box mailing address. I appreciate it, everything that, uh, that uh, the folks out there send to me. So with that, I guess let's get going on the Peterbilt. All right, so this is the stuff I bought here, aircraft paint stripper. And it says basically you just put it on there, wait 15 minutes, and then you can water rinseable to wash it off. But I imagine it's pretty, pretty corrosive. So. The things I wanted to protect, obviously, are the, the polished fuel tanks. Uh, I'll take the signal lights off, the headlights off. I might actually, I think I'll unbolt the bumper. It's, it's only four bolts and that comes off of there. And take off the duck. Yeah, and then that's, that's pretty much it because I've got, I've got new step boxes, so I'm not worried about those. I guess I'll have to plastic off the windshield. I haven't done that yet. And remove those upper brackets and i'm actually gonna i guess i'll grind off those those mounts from my old visor because daryl bagger from bagger industries made me a custom uh, old school visor that's actually gonna it drops down well I'll, I'll post a picture of it in here of what it's gonna look like i think it's gonna be more old school cool so i'm looking forward to putting that on there I guess I'll take off those back lights. And actually speaking of lights, I suppose I need to take out those four lights there. Yeah, so there's a little bit of work that needs doing here before I get to, to throw on the, the aircraft paint stripper. But I'm actually looking forward to seeing how well this stuff's gonna work.
little to, to be undoing all this work that I did. But, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Shouldn't be that hard to, to fix. I'll just have to get some new gaskets because the old one's stuck on there. And it'll be worth it because when this truck is all painted up, man, it's going to be sweet. Peterbilt Oval. It's pretty special and it has been around a long time. I think originally it was black and white in the 30s. Now Peterbilt started I think in 39 and then in the early 50s, I think either 53 or 54, they went to the uh, to the red oval with the Peterbilt script on the uh, model, I think it was the model 351. And interestingly enough the 351 was the longest running model out of all the Peterbilts. And then of course they went to the 359, then the 379, 389, and then uh, yeah that's pretty much the end of the 300 series. Now they've got the 579 that they put a long hood on, but that's a highway tractor with a single windshield and I, it's, not, it's not a 300 series folks, I'm sorry. So I think with the 389 that is actually the end of an era, the end of the 300 series, but it was a good run. There's a lot of good old Peterbilts out of there. And that is a very well-known logo. Cool. home stretch. So I'm probably going to need to redo this after I finish all the body work and sanding because there's going to be a lot of dust in there. So I'll probably redo this and the windshield when, when I'm finally ready to paint. So this is just to keep dust and when I hose it all down, obviously water out of the cab. But I think this will work fine for now. So with that, I think I'm almost ready to, to drive this thing out of here because I don't want to, I don't want to really do this in the shop because it's got uh, a lot of fumes is what the uh, back of the package says. And then also I don't want to drip it onto the floor because then I'll have to clean the floor whereas gravel, who cares, right? So I think with that, fire it up and drive it out. There, covered up the old rubber duck. They don't want to get any chemical or paint on it. That was actually a gift from my mom years ago when I first started this project. I always wanted to put a, a duck up on the hood of my first semi truck. So I know I mentioned I was going to take it off of there, but you can't actually get at the nuts, <laughs> the duck nuts. You can't get at the duck nuts from underneath uh, without taking the hood off just because it's too far forward to reach. And uh, speaking of taking the hood off, I've, I'm actually, I'm contemplating taking the hood off to, to paint it because if I had the hood off, not only could I paint the outside, but I could paint the inside at the same time as well. So, so I might do that because it would be awfully easy with the gantry now. When I first, I bought this hood, of course this wasn't the original hood. I bought this hood off a guy in Saskatchewan and in order to mount it, because it had the lower cutout that I liked, I didn't like the Canadian intake higher cutout. Plus it was torn on the other side because this truck got in an accident before I bought it. Just a minor accident. The truck was kind of, you know, the truck was okay, but the, uh, the, the, the Chevy C10 that it hit is no longer with us. But if you recall, oh my God, years ago when I used the rafters in the garage over there and, uh, and it was able to use chain falls to mount it. But I know I'm rambling now, but I could easily use 
the Gratz gantry. So, yeah, we'll see. I uh, haven't decided yet, but figure where it is right now. It'll be easier to do the bodywork, so I'll leave it there. And then color. I still kicking tires on the color. I, I'm pretty sold on the the sovereign blue. So that, that that this isn't the original sleeper either. If you go back to the very first episode, you'll notice that the original 359 sleeper has a bunk door, a walk-in and outdoor on both sides, and it also had a Peterbilt logo stamped into the roof cap. So it was a very unique sleeper, but it was just too far gone. I mean, the truck was bad, the bunk was even worse. So I elected to I bought this one off Kijiji. It's off an early 379. And I just happened to really like the color. It's called uh, Sovereign Blue, which is a Packard color. It's a uh, Packard, of course, it's a company that owns Peterbilt and Kenworth. So it is an official Peterbilt color. And I really like it. So I was thinking I was gonna paint the whole truck that color and then uh, maybe have some white stripes. And I've, I've been picking and choosing different uh, trucks out on the internet there. And I've been showing the missus and I said, what do you think about this one? What do you think about this one? And it's funny because last night I was showing her one that I found. And I said, I really like this because this is the classic Peterbilt styling of the 70s and period correct. And she went, yeah, you know, it's, it's borderline tacky. And I thought, tacky? No, it's, it's, it's classy. But she goes, well, what if you left the truck blue and the hood white? I mean, no, I know that's a that's a crazy idea, but this truck kind of became the white hooded, blue little by little truck, and it would definitely pay homage to where this truck started and kind of where it ended up. So let me know your thoughts down below if I should paint the whole thing blue and do a '70s style stripe pattern on it, or if I should actually leave the hood white and paint the rest of it blue. Well, paint the hood white, paint the rest of the truck blue, and then clear coat the whole thing. All right, let's get the truck out of here. Okay, so I was just reading the instructions here, and it's saying for best results, where did it say that? Uh, sand the surface with 80 grit before applying the product. So I think that's just to take the shiny off of it and allow it a little better path to get in there and eat at the paint. So I figure what I'll do is I'll just try my board sander. This thing's been getting a workout on the frame rails on the Duke. And we'll just do a little bit of scuffing because again, the better the paint stripper works, the less work I have to do later. So get going on that, sand this down, and then yeah, we'll try and take off 40 years of paint. Switch to a long sleeve because there's a lot of warnings on here to keep this stuff off your bare skin. So, uh, also put a mask on and some glasses. Oh, it's about the consistency of honey. I guess it's a thick consistency in order to stay on a vertical surface so it doesn't just wash off or drain down. Okay, let's give this stuff a go.
you can already see it bubbling up. Yeah, this stuff definitely works. I'm gonna just peel off the outer layer. Now I may need to scrape this off and then do it again and attack the color of the layer of paint underneath. So it might be an iterative process, but what I did discover is it actually eats through mechanics gloves. You can see that it actually ate through there. So I, I felt my skin burning. I'm like, what, what the hell is going on? So it says use rubber gloves. So I went and stole Mrs. Twin Sticks rubber gloves. So sorry, honey, I'm going to have to buy you a new pair. So hopefully these work because that's a bit of a bummer if it eats through your gloves and starts eating your hand. Okay. Where was I? <laughs> you listen closely, you can actually hear it bubbling. <laughs> that is cool. Yes, yeah, science! Minutes inside the minutes. So while that's soaking, it says that you gotta let it sit for about 20 to 30 minutes. I'll start sanding the hood. Look at it just eat it up. This is a pretty slick way to do it. So you can see it's still the, the paint layer underneath. I don't know if it keeps eating through or if I need to scrape this all off and then uh, and then put another coat on. But yeah, it's definitely saving definitely saving sanding time. I mean there I think that's that's the metal underneath. So maybe there's only one coat of paint on this on the on the sleeper. But yeah, I now, of course, I couldn't have done this on Snowman. I had to sand that down the hard way because it's fiberglass, and I don't believe you can use this stuff. You can only have a, a metal base and not fiberglass, but yeah. So there's half the truck, almost. So what I'll do is I'll tilt the hood forward, I'll start sanding that, and then just work my way around to the side and all the way around. And then I can't wait to scrape it all off and hit it with the car washer. All right, I've earned my treat. Oh, it's hot out here. Uh, so I got the, the back half, the front half, and the other side of the truck uh, sanded down. I still gotta put the, uh, the paint thinner on there. But I just wanna take a quick look and see how this is doing. Oh, look at that. Cool. Is this truck pink at one time? I wonder if that was just a uh, primer. Now it's not going through that, that layer there. So I wonder, maybe I'll do a test section here. I'll scrape this off. I should probably be wearing gloves. And I'll put a, uh, I'll put another layer to see if I can eat down on this. And see if I can get to bare metal. But I'm pretty sure this section, oh yeah, look at that. Although it only bubbled in certain spots, maybe it just needs a little more time. Let's go check the fender out. Oh yeah, the fender's looking like it's uh, gonna go right to bare metal. Oh, look at that, beauty.
Yeah, it looks like it ate through in some spots, but not others. Isn't that odd? I wonder why, what caused it to go all the way to bare metal there, but not there. You'd have to believe that I put the same amount of uh, stripper on there. But yeah, bare metal is pretty sweet. Okay, guess I'll get out the, the gloves, the mask, and the good old paintbrush and, and get going. Huh. This white fluff, it's like it's snowing. I have to say, I almost like this, this light color better, the light blue. Ah. Okay, Mark, we're back to work. I wonder, do you think my roller... Oh. I think the roller would work? I wonder if I should give it a try. I mean, the worst that could happen is it doesn't work. And then I just go back to the brush. I guess. Child proof. Oh, come on. Yeah. There you go. Let's see, I hope this works. A little productivity into the day. Yeah, it's pretty thick, but I think this will work. <laughs> All right. It's not ideal, but it doesn't matter how it looks, as long as you get it on there. And it's way faster than the brush. That means it's not really rolling. There it goes. Well, I think I'm gonna stick with it. Just here it's sizzling, it's like frying bacon in the morning. Okay, that's looking decent. I'm really happy that I figured out the, uh, to use the paint roller. That went a heck of a lot faster. Okay, so I guess now I'll, I'll give it about a half hour. Maybe I'll go and have another cold one and then I'll start scraping. When I drink brown liquor, I get crazy quicker than an old red fox on the run. I get tongue tied and I lose my mind, and everything comes undone. Oh, look how cool this is. Oh, wow. Just cleans it right off of there.
was a heck of a lot easier than sanding that down to bare metal. Okay, I better get the garbage. So I put another coat on the on the pink paint there. And it looks like it's eating it. Now it does say avoid direct sunlight, so I wonder if that's why there wasn't much reaction going on there. Because of course Mr. Sun is just shining right down on that. But that's okay, maybe I can wait till later in the day and put a, another coat on. But look at that beauty. Just pulled it right off the aluminum i love it and with every one of these huck bolts where the paint comes off that's uh that's saving me some time there too it's a lot of work to get around those and i can see that whoever painted these before sanded them flat so i worked extremely hard on snowman to go around all the huck rivets and just lightly sand them whereas it looks like whoever painted this before didn't care and flatten them all out, which is a shame. So I'll have to be careful with them because I don't want them to go any flatter. I had a friend of mine that actually he took it to a paint shop and they just went and then sanded them all down and you could barely you could barely see the hucks. So they did a really crappy job on that. But yeah, it's coming along. Alright, I'll give it a little more time and let it soak in. But I think this is gonna work. And then what I'll do is hit it with the car wash. Well, I might put a few more coats on in some of the spots that it actually didn't start eating. And then I'll get out the car washer and, and hose are all off. Sweet. Okay, I'm at the fun part now. I put a, I scraped it all down. I put another coat of the aircraft stripper on there. I waited 30 minutes and now I'm gonna hit it with the car washer and then I'm gonna call it a day. It's a mighty yodel and a hobo moan Jimmy, he's dead, he's been a long time gone Been a long time gone He's been a long time gone But if you wanna get to heaven, gotta be Yeah, this would probably work better if I had a more powerful car washer I just got this little electric Ryobi and I mean, at least it's washing the chemical off, but it's leaving a little bit of the, of the flaky pieces. So when I finally get this back inside and start working on it again, I can just hit it with the sander, obviously, and that'll just come right off of there or just pull them off. But yeah, it, did, uh, it definitely saved me a lot of hours of sanding because to, to get it to this bare metal would have taken me at least three or four Saturdays. And with the chemical, it only took me one. Winning. just about done which is good timing because it's almost supper time so i'll run and grab some pizza for my girls and oh get chemical water all over my hands all right oh this place starts so good so good all right well hope you enjoyed the episode thanks for watching till the end Hope you learned something. 
really appreciate if you want to comment down below good or bad and uh yeah see you next week oh yeah and don't ever forget if you got it the trucker brought it